Hello everyone and welcome to our third webinar in this series. Um, first of all, we appreciate all of the support and kind messages. Um, again, the response has just totally blown us away. Um, we've got a lot to get through today, so let's just jump straight into it. Um, so, recap on last time. Um, uh, we looked at the interpreter interface, um, so all of the specific interpreter functions. Um, these are the functions that allow us to integrate interpretation into any platform, um, including running multiple interpreters per language, language relays, handovers, and dedicated chat areas. Um, we touched further on integrations with other platforms. Um, we outlined the security features of the platform and explained a couple of case studies showing different ways that we have used the platform in the past. Uh, and of course, a lot of questions, uh, which we would love a lot more. Um, please send them through, but please keep it civil in the chat. Um, so what are we going to look at this time? Uh, by the title, I'm guessing you know we're going to focus on the user experience. Uh, we'll take a closer look at the user experience, starting with some live simultaneous interpretation from interpreters working all over the world. Um, thank you, first of all, to the um, interpreters who have volunteered to assist with this demonstration. Um, we hope that they have gained some useful skills by helping us out on this and actually um, working on a live event. Um, thank you to our guys, Barney and Paneeth, who stayed up um, late the last few nights training interpreters in all different time zones all over the world. Um, thank you again to the Macquarie language students for putting their hands up once again. Um, the entire class volunteered, so it's great to see so many enthusiastic future interpreters. Um, it's clear to see the industry is in very good hands. Uh, we have Sarah, Alina, Angel and Isaac working inside a booth here, um, and that's on top of all the other interpreters working all over the world. Um, so let's go straight um, back to the program. Um, uh, and we will also, sorry, what are we looking at? We're going to be looking at the app. Um, if you have already downloaded it, you can um, log in shortly and play along with us at home. Um, we'll be going through all of the features there and how that works. We will outline the front end for, um, for the delegates, so the delegates on the ground or at home, we'll look at that, uh, and a further explanation on integrations. Um, and of course, we're going to be stopping for Q&A throughout, so um, as I said, keep your com questions coming through. So uh, before we receive an influx of questions about topics we've either covered or plan to cover, um, there's a few um, subjects here that are coming up on my slides. Um, so we will be looking at recordings again. We will be talking about internet reliability. We will be talking about integrations again. Um, we will be kind of taking a quick look at um, hybrid solutions again, just to kind of get it across and help explain what they are and how they work. Um, and we will be touching on pricing. Um, First of all, I'd like to start by addressing um, some potential concerns that some people um, may have. Um, so we're doing this predominantly because we all have some extra time on our hands uh, and there's a big knowledge gap when it comes to remote interpretation. Um, so we thought we would try and share some of our knowledge. Um, however, while the majority of the feedback has been really supportive, like I said, it's just um, outstanding the amount of um, supportive feedback we've had, there seems to be a tone of uncertainty coming from some interpreters. Um, so I just wanted to let everyone know that we aren't saying remote interpretation is the only way forward. It's absolutely not, um, but it is a viable solution. Um, and we have had event organizers coming to us before the lockdown saying they only wanted remote interpretation, um, that they had used it in the past and they wanted to do it again. Um, as I keep reiterating, there are obvious risks with remote interpretation, um, but there are also rewards for those risks. Um, again, cost versus reliability. Um, so we are not suggesting to all of our clients to use remote interpretation. Um, we are suggesting it as a solution when it is a realistic alternative. Um, say, for example, there are no local interpreters or there's no local equi equipment. It is a realistic alternative. Uh, we want on-site interpreters and equipment as much as anyone else. Um, of course, it's the most desirable scenario, um, but if we do not become the experts in this space, and I mean us um, and all the interpreters and even the event organizers out there, um, uh, unprofessional alternatives could become the mainstream, and it's unlikely that they understand the true requirements of interpreters, um, and they could also be offering unskilled interpreters, so no one benefits from that. Uh, a similar example um, is the taxi industry was not progressing, and I'm talking for Australia. I know we have a load of um, international guests, but I'm guessing it was probably a similar scenario around the world. Um, the taxi industry was not progressing. Um, so Uber, Uber came along, um, and for them, for the taxi industry, it was too late. 
Um, luckily for the taxi companies, the government stepped in to support them, um, but I think it's unlikely that um, we will be offered the same, report, uh, same support from our governments. I just wanted to put it out there. So let's have a recap. Um, first of all, you're all logged in as the audience. Um, I, I'll also state that everyone um, who's joined uh, has, has joined as an audience member, so you won't have the interpreter functions. Of course, that does not include our interpreters. Um, they do have the interpreter functions, but for the majority of our audience, you are logged in as an audience. So some people were a little bit confused why they didn't have the interpreter co controls. That's because you were logged in as an audience member, not as an interpreter. Um, but we did touch on all of those last week, so we have um, handed out the recordings on the interpreter interface. Um, I'm sure most people are comfortable with the interface, the audience interface, but anyone who missed it last week, um, these are some of the audience controls that you have. Um, so there is a language selection, um, and that's when you can flick through the different languages. We will have multilingual speakers later, so we'll come back to that. So stick on the source for now, um, and we'll come back to the interpretation. The video, obviously you have a big video window, and I can see there my slides are one of the videos and the camera is another video. You can click on either of those videos to make it larger, um, so you can choose which screen you want to see large, or you can have all of them small. Um, and again, when we bring people on, we'll also see their video, so you can click on them to make their videos larger. Um, there's the chat. Um, you can chat close the chat, but when a new chat comes up, um, it pops up. So some people found that quite distracting, so that's why we ask um, if everyone can keep it relevant, civilized in the chat, that would be great. Um, some people also said that they heard the, the notifications from the chat. There's a little bell icon. If you click that, it should turn off the, um, the noises for you. There is a settings cog, um, which we are going to come back to in just a second. And you can restart the lines. So if you have any issues, restart the lines. It takes about two seconds to come back online. So try that out if you are experiencing anything there. So as I mentioned, if you go into the settings cog, you see this, um, if you look at my slides now, we had a few people saying they could hear the floor while they were listening to an interpretation channel. Um, so if you don't want to do that, click the cog and then click the mute floor during interpreting. So then you'll no longer hear the floor come through a language channel. Um, so hopefully that helps out quite a few people. Um, all right, let's jump straight into the app. So we did have instructions on how to download it. Um, you don't need to get it now. I'm going to run through all the screens. But if you have it, uh, feel free to go through it with me in real time. Um, so to find the app, you just need to search um, Congress Rental Network in your app store, so iOS or Android. Um, the app is for audio streaming of the language feeds. Um, or, or the source feed, I should say. Um, but you can stream the video on it if configured. Today, we've only got the audio coming through on the app. Um, so we, we, I gave an example last week um, of you walk into a meeting room. So let's pretend back in the day when we had on-site events, you walk into a room and there's a meeting being held, being held in um, a couple of languages that you don't speak, um, say French and Spanish. The normal thing you would do is sit down, put on your headsets with your receiver and listen to, in our example, the English channel. So then you're hearing the English interpretation no matter what language they speak on the floor. The app is similar to that. You can join a conference call. Um, it doesn't matter what language they're speaking on the floor. Um, you join your conference call on your computer in front of you. You pick up the app, you pick your language channel, you put your headphones on and then it's just like you're in a meeting room. So that's just one example of using the app for remote interpretation. Um, of course, it's not the only solution. Um, you can also use the browser as we all are now. Um, but there's, uh, and we can also combine video and audio feeds on different streaming platforms. Um, so please don't think that this is the only solution. There are many solutions. This is just one of the many solutions. Um, there's some considerations. Now, if we talk about using the app for an on-site event, um, so let's again pretend we're not in lockdown and we're at a live event. Um, there's some considerations for using the app at a live event. Um, first of all, Wi-Fi is absolutely the most preferred scenario. You don't eat into the client's 4G data. Um, it also helps with battery life. Um, so we, we can help you source the Wi-Fi from the venue. Um, Battery life is a massive consideration. If you have a nine hour or 10 hour event um, and you're streaming through the app the entire time, chances are the batteries won't last. And if you had say, even a few hundred people trying to charge a few hundred phones every break is kind of not really feasible. Um, so that's just one of the considerations um, an event organizer may have when discussing using the app for a live event. Um, 
So I guess let's move straight into what it looks like. So as soon as you open the app, it prompts you to connect headsets. Um, as I mentioned, just like a receiver, you'd plug in your headset and away you go. You can use your speaker, um, but obviously headset is preferred um, because usually you're around other people and you don't want a lot of phones on loudspeaker playing different languages because that's just chaos. Um, so it will prompt you to use headphones, but if you're at home by yourself, you can actually play it through the speaker on your phone. Next, it will ask you for the event token. So everyone joining now um, has logged in with the event token. The same goes for the app. So if you want to log into this event now on the app, you can use the event token that's in front of you, Congress RSI. Um, I believe it's case sensitive, so make sure you're um, doing the case correct there. And as soon as you log on, and I should also quickly mention having this token is part of the security features. Um, you can have two-factor authentication when you're logging into the app. And of course, the event organizer allocates what the token is. So then once you've put in the correct token and if there is two-factor authentication you've passed, you go to the select a language channel. This is, again, like having a receiver at an on-site event. You pick your language and away you go. So how that works for an actual event is um, in this example, we have some people speaking French and some people speaking um, English. Let's say we're on a conference call. When there's people speaking English on the floor, um, you have the headphones on and the English will come through because there's no interpretation on the English channel. When the people start speaking French on the floor, the interpreters kick into the English channel and then you'll start hearing the English through the headphones. And the same happens through all of these languages as we're going to experience here when we get some multilingual um, speakers on here. We'll all get to experience. I'm assuming not everyone speaks all these languages. So to hear what we're saying, you will need to go to the correct language channel. Um, so, uh, as I said, everyone today, let's flick through the languages, um, but um, we are going to be talking about some kind of arbitrary stuff. I didn't want to talk about um, specific, you know, relevant things. So we're going to have just kind of some inane conversations, and you can flick through all the different language channels and listen to all of our interpreters from all over the world. Um, then once you're all logged on and live, you've selected your language, you have your headphones in or you're running through a speaker, your phone sits there, this is the live page. You will see the audio meters move when there's sound coming through um, and you can quickly select the language and change languages if you want. Um, you can also select the floor if you want to hear the floor. Uh, where the blue waves are, that's where the video would pop up, um, but today we only have audio running through. Um, if you lock your phone, the audio continues to run in the background. So this is, um, this is a way to help with battery drain, whether it's an on-site event or whether you're working at home. But again, battery drain is something to consider. Um, and as I keep mentioning, this is just one of the solutions we can offer to an event organizer. Um, so kind of the idea with the app for um, remote events or web conferencing events is you hold the event on a web conferencing um, platform. All the event happens on there. You have the app listening in your language channel. So you're listening to the event entirely in a single language, just like you would at an on-site event. So um, I think I'm going to introduce our um, special guests. Um, there's going to be a mixture of one-way interpretation and relay interpretation. And again, for anyone who missed the first webinar, um, one-way interpretation is, for example, Myself and my guests are going to be speaking in English, and then the Indonesian interpreters are going to interpret into Indonesian. That's one way interpretation. The Indonesian interpreters listen to English and interpret into Bahasa Indonesia. Relay interpretation, which we'll also be trying out. Some of our guests are not going to speak English. Relay interpretation is uh, one, one person, so say for example we've got Tomas joining us, he's going to be speaking Hungarian. The Hungarian interpreters are going to listen to Tomas interpret into English and then all of the other language interpreters, interpreters are going to listen to the English interpretation and then interpret into their second languages. So say for example Paola wanted to listen in Indonesian, all she would need to do is flick over to the Indonesian channel and what she would be hearing is to mass in Hungarian into English through the Hungarian interpreter, English into Indonesian through the Indonesian interpreter. It's quite confusing, but it works really well, so that's relay interpretation. 
Um, now, due to the time zones, the interpreters will only be working in this part of the event, so I do encourage you all to switch through all the different languages. As I mentioned, we're not going to be talking about anything um, too exciting here, so feel free to flick through the languages and experience all the different languages. Um, and then hopefully it gives you an idea of how it would work in different languages. But don't forget, if you're, a, if you're a delegate sitting in an event, you would select your language and then you would sit there on that language throughout the entire event. All right, so um, I'm going to pop on my headset so I can hear our guests, but if we can please get Paola on the line, that would be great. Um, I'm going to speak slowly so our interpreters can work um, nice and efficiently, um, especially when it comes to relay interpreting, because remember it has to go through two layers of interpreters. Um, so I can see Paola there. Hi, Paola, how are you? Hi, Seth. I'm good, awesome. how are you? I'm very well. I can hear you nice and clearly. Um, so Paola and I are going to have a quick conversation in um, English. Um, so everyone, I please encourage you, whether you're on the browser or on the app, please flick through all the languages and have a listen through. Um, so Paola, let's start nice and simple. Please explain who you are, um, what your role is, where you are based, and what has been the biggest challenge for you in lockdown. All right. Hi, Seb. Hi, everyone. I'm Paola from Congress Rental Indonesia. Um, all the team, we are based uh, in Bali currently. And I guess one of the biggest challenge having the situation right now in Indonesia is um, to, to be able to have uh, traditional events. Uh, so that's why right now uh, we started getting more inquiries about um, online events, virtual events. That means, which means you only need to be in your bedroom to be able to log into any virtual events in the world. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, it's good. You know, there's always a silver lining. Um, so, you know, that's good. I've got another quick question. Um, please tell me, where are your interpreters located um, and what equipment are they using to um, work remotely today? Right. Um, currently, there are two Bahasa Indonesia English interpreters um, who are supporting us right now in this webinar. They're on the Indonesian channel right now, if anybody wants to listen to uh, to their interpretation. Thank you so much for the two interpreters. Um, the first interpreter, she is located in Jakarta. Her name is Rika. She is using a, you know, pretty standard, normal laptop and uh, quite a decent microphone. Uh, but since we are all in Bali, um, she doesn't use any uh, of our Bosch console or gear. Um, the second interpreter, she is Bali based. Her name is Windy. She is currently interpreting uh, in our warehouse in Sanur, Bali. Um, she is using uh, our traditional hardware, Bosch traditional hardware interpretation. Um, and we get a feed from the traditional hardware to and put the feed to our um, remote simultaneous interpretation platform. So that's yeah, it's pretty neat. Cool. So that's a really good example of hybrid. We have one Indonesian interpreter working on a laptop with a microphone and then one interpreter who is working at, say, an interpreter hub in the office, working with some Bosch gear. Um, and I'm guessing they're probably working in a booth because I can't hear them in the background. Yeah. Thank you very much, Paola. I really appreciate your time. Um, so we will kindly kick you off. Um, and apologies, people and Indonesia, people in the chat and Indonesian, I'm going to try and talk slowly. Um, I'm, a, I'm an excitable person, so I do tend to speak fast sometimes, especially when I'm passionate about something. So can we please bring on to Mass from Hungary? He's coming, everyone. I'm told he's coming. Hopefully everyone had a chance to flick through and listen to all the different languages. Hi Tomas, how are you? I can see you there nice and clear. Look, I'm Hi, going Sam. to jump hey, I'm going to jump straight in there. Um, my understanding is um, Tomas is going to speak in Hungarian. So I'm listening to English on my headphones because I don't speak Hungarian. Um, so the only way that I can uh, understand Tomas's response is um, by listening to the English channel. So again, I'm going to keep it simple. Um, please tell me um, who you are, what your role is, where you're based, and what has been the biggest challenge for you in lockdown. 
Szia, szép, köszönöm a, a meghívást. Uh, Tamás vagyok, Szegő Tamás. My name is Tomás. I represent uh, Special Effects in International. I'm the uh, head of sales and marketing in our company. A good day, a nice day to everyone. May I worship on. We started this year with uh, Manpower 150. And uh, as little or as many as 18 had to be uh, made redundant, unfortunately. Uh, as for salaries, we had to reduce by 30 to 50 percent, which was unavoidable. But nevertheless, our new purpose uh, and objective is to retain our existing manpower because we believe that manpower is key and we need to share the burdens. Uh, and this is the only way by virtue of which we can survive so as to be able to do conventional events later on uh, when life goes back to normal. We use our time and capitalize on this lockdown by way of um, uh, rearranging and uh, refurbishing stuff. We have our internal training courses and seminars. Uh, we uh, build new relations uh, with companies. We sell new types of services. And day and night, we're trying to preserve our company and certainly our work as our staff and we uh, continue to liaise with our partners and clients. In addition to this, we try to keep everyone busy in the company uh, to the, be the best of our, our, our uh, capabilities uh, so as to generate uh, income. This is it in a nutshell. Thank you very much for the invite. Thank you for setting this up. Uh, thanks for the efforts uh, on behalf of the interpreters. May I wish upon best for all of you from Budapest, uh, from CRN. Thank you. That's it. Thank you so much. I was actually, I heard through the CRN um, that you had some special working arrangements, but you pretty much covered everything. Um, and I think it's a pretty common theme that, um, of course, there's going to be an end to this and you need to be ready for the end because, um, you know, we want to be ready to support everyone. Um, I was going to move straight on to another um, presenter, but I have been asked in the chat, um, what is the interpreter set up in Hungary, if you know? Uh, should I answer in Hungarian as well? Totally up to you. All right, okay, I'll do, I'll do English now. So basically what we do is uh, we're supporting this uh, event with four interpreters. Uh, two of them are obviously Hungarian, Hungarian English, and two of them are English and French. Um, and out of them, one of uh, the Hungarian interpreter is sitting at our warehouse. Uh, we set up a booth for him. And uh, the other three persons, uh, they're each sitting at home, uh, working from their home office. Awesome. So we've got a mixture of configurations. And again, the interpreters can pretty much um work wherever, whatever suits them and whatever suits the requirements. So that's really cool. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate you Thank and you all much. your efforts as well. Um, I'll kindly kick you off. No worries. Speak to you soon. Um, so I'm now going to move on to our friend Husnu from Turkey. Um, so if Husnu can please get ready um, in the chat. Um, by the way, we've got a chairperson working in the background controlling everything because it would be a little bit hard for me to kind of control everything and do the presentation. Um, just quickly in the chat, it's not an interpretation exam, so please be kind to our interpreters. They have donated their time. Um, feel free to comment on the platform and your experience, um, but keep it nice um, for all the interpreters. They're working really hard and they're probably, a lot of them have got out of bed, so um, let's be nice. Um, so Husnu, um, good to talk to you again. Um, great to see you. Um, but for everyone else listening all over the world, please tell us who you are, what your role is, uh, where you are based, and what has been the biggest challenge for you in lockdown. I'm Husnu. I live in Istanbul. I work for the Consist, and I'm a sound and video technician. During the lockdown, the greatest challenge has been to be locked up at home, basically. So that was the only challenge for us, but we had major challenges in terms of work because all of the events have been cancelled. We have to wait until the 15th of June and it's uh, uncertain what will happen after that. Cool. 
Well, I think a lot of people um, probably don't know what's going on in, in, in a lot of countries, whether it's a similar circumstance. Um, but are you able to elaborate a little bit more on what the situation is in Turkey? Um, are, you know, eating places open? Are supermarkets open? Okay. The lockdown. We have partial restrictions, so people younger than 20 or older than 65, 65 cannot go out. Restaurants are open, but you can't sit down. You can only take away or you can just place orders, home deliveries. So people have been encouraged to stay at home. So that's basically it. Very similar situation here and then probably the same across across the world. Thank you so much, Husnu. Appreciate all of your time um, and to the interpreters. We really appreciate it. Thank you. So I heard we had Jason from Taiwan. Can the guys in the background, uh, I'm not sure if Taiwan are ready. So I had a slide open, yeah? All right, let's speak to Jason in Taiwan. So while the guys pull up Jason, um, Jason is our CRN partner in Taiwan. Hi, Jason, how are you? Hi, Sebastian. So great to see you again. Um, so look, let's, let's keep it nice and simple um, and we'll do what we did with everyone. Please introduce yourself, um, who you are, what your role is, uh, where you are based and what has been the biggest challenge for you in um, lockdown. Okay, so I would do in, in Mandarin. I am in charge of GIS Congress Rental. Um, today, our interpreter today is Meg, and she is currently interpreting in one of our uh, warehouses. Um, Taiwan, in this pandemic, Taiwan is considered lucky because we have not have a large scale outbreak. The confirmed cases will not go over 450 and 80% of them were imported. Almost 80% of the patients have been cured and discharged. Over 300 people have been released from isolation. Mm, we are one of the few countries that do not engage in any lockdowns. So uh, most of the businesses are running as usual. Students, students go to their schools for classes. Um, of course, some offices will uh, start with this uh, working from home policy, but the government is not currently encouraging people to work from home. So I would say so far, uh, this, uh, t the government is doing an effective job in fighting the outbreak. So um, a lot of, so, um, but we still, in, in mice industry, this is still a very big challenge for us because a lot of international meetings are canceled and we are looking at um, season three and four. The meetings in these two seasons are also moving to next year. So we are facing a huge challenge here. I hope that we can face this challenge together and work together to have our Congress industry back in normal. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much, Jason. I was actually going to, yeah, absolutely perfect. I was actually going to ask, because um, Taiwan is obviously so close to China or in China or part of China. Um, I was going to ask, what is the future of uh, the events industry? But I think you've answered everything nice and clearly. So um, it sounds pretty positive. Um, I have seen on all the news, uh, all the news sources that you, you're faring pretty well. Um, so well done. Um, keep safe and um, look forward to working in with you as soon as possible. Thank you very much, Jason. Let's bring on Porn Pan from Thailand. Um, Porn Pan, a good friend. Um, and I'll quickly note while Porn Pan's coming on, we've had a couple of um, comments and questions in the chat. Um, so someone asked if the interpreters are the same as we use during events or students. Uh, so they're not 
our interpreters, they are interpreters that um, our partners, we and our partners have reached out to or have uh, contacted us to volunteer to be part of this. Some of them are, stu some of them are students, some of them are professional interpreters. Um, for example, uh, we've been told the Slovenian interpreters are not students. Um, so we just appreciate all of their work. They have volunteered their time. Um, thank you very much. Porn Pan, lovely to see you again. Um, I'll keep it nice and simple. Please let everyone know who you are, what is your role, where are you located, and what has been the biggest challenge for you in lockdown. Hi everyone, I'm Pon Pan. I work uh, for Namtip um, company. I'm looking at uh, sales marketing and development. The situation in Thailand at the moment, we started uh, quite soon after China because of the COVID. So we have a lot of Chinese tourists in and we were affected right from the start. But at present, the government has uh, um, cut down on their lockdown, but they are suggesting that everyone stays at home so that they're safe and they can stop the disease. But at present, I believe that uh, not many people uh, are going outside. So all the lockdown measures may uh, come back in the future. For the work, we do not have any events for almost three months, unfortunately. So we are looking at the good points of using this platform as a remote interpretation as a choice for the clients after the lockdown is lifted. Okay. I, I did hear that um, Thailand was actually um, one of the first countries to have a case outside of China. So it's quite interesting that things are um, uh, positive and things will change. Um, so I guess I'll just quickly ask, um, where are your interpreters located and do you know what, their, um, what equipment they're using or what their um, solution um, that they're currently working on is? Yes, for the interpreter, she's working from home. Uh, the equipment is using, we use a simple uh, uh, equipment like one computer link uh, with a landline for the internet and uh, we use the Chrome uh, internet browser. She has a microphone and a heads uh, phone so that she can work. Awesome, so an example of an interpreter working from home on a computer. Perfect. Thank you so much, Porn Pan. Appreciate your time um, and your interpreter, of course, um, and look forward to connecting again when things kind of settle down again. See you later. So I will move uh, on. We have uh, our friend Robert from Slovenia. Um, as we heard, we have um, professional interpreters working in Slovenia, I believe, that Robert has organised. Um, so let's pull up Robert. Um, as soon as uh, he comes in. So we're having a few questions about the delay. Um, it's mostly about the delay of the interpreter rather than the platform. So I guess it's the delay of switching languages. Um, so I guess my response for that while Robert is coming in is we're, we're, we're kind of coming back to risk versus reward. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the, I don't know, I don't even know if you would call it a compromise. I think it's just a fact of running um, video remote interpreting. Um, but I must also say I'm not sure how many people have experienced relay interpretation on site um, and even when the interpreters are working in booths in the room um, there is occasionally a, quite a delay when there is a relay because remember the interpreter has to listen to the person on the floor process that person's speech um, and then the other interpreters will listen to their interpretation, have to process that speech and then it goes out again. So um, in my experience it's not, it's absolutely not uh, instant um, on site. Um, so, you know, that's just a comment from me. Um, but of course, I'm hearing English and my conversations with these people, if I was holding meetings um, with these guests, um, I would be quite happy with this. I think the conversations were quite easy to have. Um, and then as soon as our guests spoke a different language, I could hear English um, quick enough in my headphones. So I was happy with that. Um, cool. I can see Robert. Hi, Robert. I hope uh, 
you can, um, everything's going well over there in Slovenia. I'll start with the basic question, same as everybody else. Um, please, please let everyone know who you are, where you're based, um, and of course, what has been the biggest challenge for you in lockdown? Um, hi, hi everyone. I will switch to Slovene, just um, to prepare myself. Um, to se, to se sem, uh, Hello, my name is Robert Omoušak. I am the director of the Robotrade company here in Slovenia. First of all, I would like to bid a very warm, warm welcome to you all. Good morning, Europe then good afternoon to everybody else and good evening australia let me present our team i invited uh, the association of conference interpreters of slovenia to take part in this event so the interpreters taking part in this event are the interpreters from that association with the english slovene combination Together with us, uh, we have Andrea Skarlonik Zichel and also Helena Bifio Zorko. You can see them both on the screen. Now, because we are making a demonstration of the RSI platform, we decided not to integrate the standard hardware consoles, uh, but rather to use the so-called soft consoles or computer consoles. Each interpreter has uh, also an extended desktop, so the interpreters can follow the presentation on a separate screen and still follow or monitor the speakers on on the main screen and uh, so it this is the extended view now both interpreters are in the same booth so they need to uh, hand over the mic but this is rather easier because they are physically in the booth now you have probably noticed that we are using an extended booth, a three person booth compliant with the new ISO standard 4043 from 2016. Um, it, this booth enables the interpreters to keep a certain distance between themselves given the situation with uh, COVID 2019. Of course, we pay great attention to security and safety of our interpreters so all the keyboards uh, computers the desktop everything has been disinfected prior to the interpreters entering the booth with regard to the situation uh, covid situation in slovenia uh, we are seeing uh, the measures relaxed here in Slovenia, but the situation is far from normal. The restaurants, bars are uh, open again, but they are limited to operate only on terraces and in gardens. We are no longer restricted in movement. Uh, so our movement is no longer restricted to our municipalities. A week ago, this was the case. We were only able to move within our municipalities, but this is no longer the case. The state borders, however, are still closed. It is impossible to uh, cross the border. And as far as our uh, branch is concerned, uh, Congress uh, activity is still limited. We are limited on being on our operation online. Blit, which is uh, where we are located, is a tourist location, but we don't see any tourists for the time being, of course. So that much on my behalf from Slovenia. Best regards. Thank you so much, Robert. I'm not sure about um anyone else in our audience, but I certainly don't understand Slovenian and it felt like I was listening to your talk, so that's amazing. Uh, before I let you go, um, just really quickly, if you can give me a one or two minute explanation on your amazing camera. Um, I of course know exactly what it is, but perhaps there are some people out there who don't understand um, the camera that you are using then and how it can be used. Um. 
se pravi, še vedno govorim v slovenščini. Um, uporabljamo... Uh, ...speaking sloven. We are using the so-called Avonik camera, PTZ camera, which can be rotated physically. It can be rotated by using a joystick. With this joystick, the camera can be turned around and uh, you can make presets, which means that you can save certain settings and then you can show uh, those preset settings with quick uh, clicks. <laughs> Here you see the reverted version of the camera. I did not think about this when preparing for this event. It is my mistake, my bad. My apologies for that. So that's it, basically. But it's a completely robotic camera. And it can be linked, it can be connected to the conference uh, system. When uh, clicking on the mic, uh, when the speaker starts to speak, the camera follows the speaker, the active speaker. Perfect. And um, thank you, Robert, for the explanation. And for anyone playing at home, they are the same cameras that we are running here in um, our Sydney office at the moment. Perhaps I can put the guys on the spot and we put a, um, here we go, we've got a moving camera. Um, so there you go. Thank you so much, Robert, and thank you to the interpreters. I, I think that would have been quite hard. Um, I know they wouldn't have prepared to talk about cameras. <laughs> so I apologise for putting them on the spot. Thank you so much, Robert. I'll kindly um, kick you off again. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, some of our interpreters are going to stop working here. So hopefully everyone had a chance to flick through the languages and were able to listen to some interpretation and some relay interpretation. Um, sorry, I mentioned only bad um, feedback. I can see we've also had some really good feedback in the chat too. So thank you to all the interpreters. Um, and um, if you flick over to any of the channels and you don't hear an interpreter anymore, it's probably because they've gone back to bed. So um, don't worry too much about that. Um, so I guess let's move straight on. Um, we've taken up a lot of time, but hopefully we've, we've done a good demonstration of um, interpretation, one-way remote interpretation and then relay remote interpretation. But let's jump into the user experience. Um, and I think one of the most important things is we've all experienced the user experience now. Of course, this is just one way of experiencing remote interpretation. We've gone through the many integrations. Um, but, um, you know, what, what is the point of uh, having the interpretation um, and what is the point of having a good user experience? Of course, you need to integrate um, interpretation into your event so we can reach a wider audience. Um, and by that we mean um, you can uh, allow people who can't, can no longer travel to attend your event or multilingual people, they can also participate or view your event. Um, so I'm going to try and simplify some examples of a user experience. Um, some of them we're experiencing now, some of them hopefully we can imagine with live events. Um, so let's start off with uh, a conference call. Um, I, I mentioned this earlier, we jump on a conference call. Of course, we're using con the Congress remote platform right now, but it doesn't have to be on the Congress remote platform. We could have been holding this on WebEx or Zoom or BlueJeans or any of the other platforms. And uh, all of us, uh, all of the listeners out there could be sitting with a receiver um, head with headphones plugged in listening to a language feed. They would hear the source if, that was, if they, the source was speaking their language, or they would hear the interpreter if they were hearing their language, just as we heard before. Um, if you want to keep sim things sim simple and it's not a two-way exchange, so say you're watching one person present like I am now, we can also stream the interpretation. So for example, we could have sent out links saying, if you want to listen to the webinar in English, click this link. If you want to listen to the webinar in Mandarin, you click this link and it could direct to say a YouTube live stream or a Facebook live stream. And then we integrate the video feed with the pure language feed. So all of the English delegates watch the English 
live feed. All of the Mandarin delegates watch the Mandarin live feed, etc. So there's many ways of doing this, there's many ways of integrating this. Um, and for the user, um, it's all very simple. We like to keep it as simple as possible for the user because that's the most important. They're obviously our harshest critics. Um, so uh, on-site events, what is the user experience for on-site events? Um, so same again with the headset example. Um, you can hold your live event with a person or multiple people speaking up the front and then the delegates on the floor can listen to the interpretation using their smartphone. The interpreters can be working on site. For example, some of the interpreters that we had working earlier were inside booths. We saw with Robert they were working inside a booth um, but they were still working on the remote platform. Um, so there's different combinations of uh, hybrid solutions whether they're working in a booth with traditional hardware or working from home on a laptop, um, there's many ways we can do it. And again, for an on-site event, um, the language feeds get distributed either on-site through the smartphone app or through traditional um, methods such as a, an infrared receiver. We can do hybrid events. It can be a mixture, it can be one, it can be the other. We can expand that even further. You might have a live event with interpreters working on-site or off-site, but you may have um, some overseas delegates who can't travel. We can also stream the event to those delegates live with interpretation, so everyone can participate. Um, I guess, I guess the, main, the main thing is we can kind of work out any configuration on any platform. We're not platform specific, um, except for having the interpreters working on Congress Remote because it's built for interpretation with all of the functions that we've talked about. I'm going to pause because I can see the guys um, furiously typing out questions. So um, I'm going to start uh, with Mason has some questions here and thank you to Mason for um, kind of keeping an eye on the chat and going through. First question, so for the app, and um, apologies to camera, I'm looking at the screen here. Um, so for the app, does it only have audio feed and not video feed? So as I mentioned at the start, the app can play video feeds, but for today we've only configured it for audio feeds because we knew everyone would be joining on their laptop for the video feeds, and we just had the app as an example so you could get in there, try it out with live interpretation um, to try and, you know, um, simulate a conference call on a laptop on any platform, it can be any platform the conference call, but then listen to the simultaneous interpretation using the app. Um, and again, that's just one example of how we can integrate interpretation into an event. Um, I wonder if we can hear from the interpreters about their experience. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to bring in the interpreters because first of all, we haven't really rehearsed it. Um, and I can't really see them. Um, but I think one of the most important things, is, uh, things to mention is our guys have spent a lot of time um, with, each, with each and every interpreter. Um, so if we go back to, I believe it was webinar two, we log into their computer remotely. We also go on a phone call and explain what we're doing to the computer. So we set up their computer and explain why we're doing each setting so they don't think we're doing anything malicious. Um, we'd like to be nice and transparent. Um, and then we have multiple moderators. So right now um, in the office, of course, we're all social distancing. Um, we have three moderators who are all, all their, their, their entire job is to sit there, um, help the interpreters out. So remember we have, I think we had uh, up to 18 interpreters working. So their job is to help all of the interpreters um, with their computers, if they need any help with anything, if they're feeling nervous, if they need help, we can just log on, chat to them, or even log in and control their computers. So hopefully we've done everything to make the interpreter experience as good as it can be. Um, as I mentioned in my previous um, webinar, the interpreter's comfort is so important to us, um, as important as our client, because we know um, if the interpreters aren't happy with how they're working, they don't want to work with us anymore. Um, and we value that so much. Um, so hopefully the interpreters have had a really good experience. Um, and then hopefully they've learned something by um, supporting us. Um, so any more questions? So how many speakers at once can you have at the same time? How, who manages allowing muting of their mics? Uh, there's more questions, I'll start with that. So it sounds like you missed out on webinar one where we explained there is a chairperson and the chairperson, so 
also going back, the chairperson has a specific token. So everyone in the audience logged on using an audience token. The interpreters logged on using an interpreter token. And then the chairperson logged on using a special chairperson token. So the chairperson allows who gets to speak. It's like a standard web conferencing platform. Um, the chairperson uh, can either pull someone up to speak or people can raise their hands to speak. Now, in order to do that, they need to log in as what we call a source token. And so only people who are source tokens can put their hand up or be pushed out to speak. The maximum number of people is, uh, I believe we have five speakers at any one time, but of course that would be a little bit chaotic for the interpreters. So that wouldn't be ideal because interpreters um, would, you know, most of the time want to interpret one person speaking at once. So, um, you know, to have a controlled event, it's nice to have a chairperson um, and make sure it's a nice structured meeting. If you have two people talking at, a same at the same time, it's called an argument, and then I don't think the interpreters want to interpret an argument. That would be a bit hard. What other functions can you have besides slide showing? Um, for example, polls, surveys, sharing docs, or similar. Yeah, so I can actually share whatever I want. Um, so if I had a window up with some polls, I could put, say, a link to a polling platform and then go to um, some live polls. But I think the most important thing here is um, perhaps the person that asked this question is forgetting that it's not all about this platform. We are using it today as an example of one way of, of um, using uh, interpretation, but we can use any platform. So if the other platforms have some functions that you want to use, you can run your meeting on any platform out there and we integrate interpretation. So we either get the delegates to stream on an app or they live stream it somewhere else if it's just a few people speaking. So you can still hold your um, event on different platforms. Please don't think it's all about this one platform and that's all there is. Uh, we're platform agnostic, except for when it comes to the interpreters, because all of those interpreter functions are really important. Um, just ask all of the interpreters. I think they would agree. Um, so we're running out of time. Mason, do you want me to go through one more of these questions nice and quickly? Um, here's one. Is it necessary for interpreters to download the app or is it for the audience? So no, the interpreters work using a computer. So the interpreters will work on a Chrome browser. Again, we went through this last week. Um, the interpreters all will work on the Chrome browser and they need to use a high quality headphone so the audio doesn't spill into the microphone and then a high quality microphone so everyone in the audience has a nice experience. They don't get listening fatigue listening to a bad quality microphone. Um, so no, the interpreters are not on the app, they're on a browser. Um, and we did also, um, to extend on that, we had a few questions where people would say, oh, but what if the interpreter wants to switch out? It is recommended that if they have another device, um, that's probably ideal to look at slideshows or search words up, use a dictionary. Um, but you can do it all on one laptop, um, especially if they're very comfortable with the platform. They know how to switch channels nice and quick. Um, you can do everything off one laptop. Um, but again, it's ideal to have two, one for working and doing side tasks on, and then one as your kind of interpretation device. So I'm going to quickly continue because there's a couple of points here um, that have been raised um, in the chat in the last couple of weeks that we wanted to um, address. So I promised this last week, I made a mistake. Uh, we had a lot of interpreters getting a bit nervous that they couldn't hear their booth partner and the source. You absolutely can. This is what it looks like if you look at my slides. So on the left hand side, you can see we're listening to the incoming source. And then on the right hand slide is a second slider and that allows you to bring in your booth partner. So if you wanted to hear your booth partner, you bring up that booth partner slider. Um, I apologize, that was my mistake. You absolutely can listen to your booth partner and the incoming or the source on your incoming at the same time. Apologies, hopefully that's clarified everything for you. Um, another thing we had a lot of people asking us about recordings. Um, are, the record, are the events recorded by default? Absolutely not. We will always ask permission um, of the interpreters working the event. Um, but also remember there are end clients out there too. Um, they can also record. So um, if the interpreter is um, in, in discussions with the end client or they've been contracted by the end client, ask them are they being recorded if there's additional rates they need to discuss that with them but if we are recording it for the client or for the interpreter or for someone else we'll absolutely let all the interpreters know um, and of course pure language recordings we can give you a, a 
pure English audio only, a pure Mandarin only, any language, a pure audio only. We can also give you a video and audio, and that can be pure language video and audio. So we can give you a video with just all of the English. So even though someone um, is speaking Mandarin, um, you will only hear the English coming through the headsets. So any type of recording in any language we can provide for you. Even if you want the source with all of the different languages, we can do that. Let us know, we will provide it for you. Um, so we wanted to, again, I wanted to go through a couple of quick demonstrations. Now I know we're running out of time, so I'll be nice and quick. Um, video conferencing integration. Um, so a simple example, and I'm just kind of hoping this expands everyone's knowledge on how the system can be used. Not The way we're using it today is just one of many ways it can, we can integrate interpretation. So we have an event held on any platform, as I mentioned earlier, Zoom, WebEx, GoToMeeting, Skype, any platform. All of your speakers can operate on that platform. We will then feed that, the audio and the video, so the interpreters will see the webcam and they will see the slides or whatever the video is on that platform, whether it's polls, anything else, that gets sent to the interpreters working remotely. And when I say remotely, they can be working inside a booth in an office, working from home, whatever. We can do anything. Um, so that becomes the source. They listen to the conference call as the source. Um, then they interpret into their outgoing language. Um, so that can be uh, streamed through the app like we were doing today, or it can be um, live streamed on a separate platform. We can do a live stream on, as I said before, YouTube Live, Facebook Live. We're going over the same stuff over and over again, um, but hopefully it kind of makes it clear. I understand it is quite hard to understand um, until you've used it. So hopefully um, by going through interpretation today, everyone has a, um, a nice idea of, of how it can work. Just one way um, that it can work. If you have other ideas, talk to us and we'll help you out with those. Um, I'm not going to talk about hardware integration. Basically, I'm saying you can have an on-site event with interpreters on-site, off-site, working from home, working in the same building but in a different room. The interpreters can be absolutely anywhere. They can be using traditional Bosch hardware. They can be using computers. Any configuration, we can work out a way of doing it. And then the delegates, whether they're on-site or off-site, we can make sure they have video and audio, audio in their language, um, audio using traditional methods, whether it's infrared headsets, audio through the app. There's so many ways we can um, support an event. Talk to us and we will offer all of the solutions and we'll weigh, weigh out the, um, the risks of all of these solutions and work out the best one. So we had um, quite a few questions about pricing. Um, so I keep saying it's not only about the platform. So please don't feel like, oh, you come talk to us and we say, oh, okay, well, hold your event on our platform. We're not about just the platform. Um, we're platform agnostic, except for when it comes to the interpreters, because that part is crucial. Um, so price is meaningless, except to dis um, price is meaningless to discuss, except to say you will be making a saving on interpreter travel requirements and booth logistics. Um, there's too many variables. There's languages, event length, platform integrations, delegate numbers, experienced or inexperienced remote interpreters. Um, do you want an experienced technician to monitor? If not, it is um, likely that the interpreters are going to go into that event very nervous and it could fail. Um, so again, we're talking about cost versus reliability and there's no set, this is how much it costs, full stop. There are way too many variabilities to even uh, kind of talk about that now. Um, so basically, for an event organizer, do the risks of going remote outweigh the cost savings? Um, and as I said, it depends on so many factors. Uh, for some event organizers, saving thousands of dollars doesn't seem so risky anymore. Um, but don't forget, we have a lot of Bosch equipment and ISO compliant booths sitting in our warehouses right now. Of course, we would all prefer that all events go on site, um, but it's just not the reality anymore. So that's what I want to say on that. And finally, what is the future of interpretation after COVID-19? And of course, these are my opinions. Um, everyone else will have their own views, as will all the news channels. Um, so Robert had a good example of having two people inside a three-person booth. So a three-person booth, booth is obviously designed to hold three interpreters, but holding two of them means they can sit separate apart. Um, we may need to ask the interpreters to consent working in a booth with a booth mate, because of course, they'll be in close proximity with that person for a long time. 
we could look at separate booths um, for uh, booth mates, but then of course that's going to add to the cost, so maybe that's not a real solution. Um, then of course we could have the interpreters working remotely. Even if the event is held um, live and on site, the interpreters could work from home or in separate rooms um, and so we can remain safe that way. Again, I'm just throwing out ideas and options because we don't really know what the future look looks like, but we can be ready for a lot of scenarios. Um, you can have sterilized headsets. So of course the delegates share headsets, um, you know, they go in and out of the meeting room, they might share them. Um, we may have to allocate a headset to one person and then own, that delegate keeps it throughout the event and sterilize it through the events. Um, but we are also preparing for single use headphones um, because of course people don't want to share the headphones and they're a little bit harder to sterilize. Um, so again there's a cost factor there to having to buy the headphone, the delegate keeps it and then they throw it away or take it home with them. Um, but there's an additional cost to that. But again these are just ideas we're throwing out there. Um, but then of course let's tie it in with remote interpretation. Perhaps the delegates can stream using their phone and using their own headsets. Um, we don't need to worry about sharing gear because it's their own equipment. Um, no need to sterilize it because it's their own. It goes home with them. Um, but then you are relying on the um, delegates to bring their own headphones, which again is a bit risky. So perhaps ask us to bring some headphones along to make sure we have all bases covered. And these are just a few ideas, things that we're thinking about for the future of interpretation. So I'm going to go through a few more questions. Um, we have, we are kind of running out of time here. Um, so they would love to see how the handover is done remotely. Um, I showed the buttons and what it looks like. I think that's as, as kind of as good as it's going to get um, without actually getting on the platform and trying it yourself. Um, feel free to get in touch with me and we can discuss that. But I would recommend logging on, um, having a look at the recording for week two and you'll see all the buttons and you'll understand how it works. Um, I noticed there was a difference in audio quality between different interpreters and between different languages. And apologies if I'm going quick here. I'm, I know we're running out of time. What is the main reason for this? This is purely down to the different headsets and this is why I kept banging on in week two about how important it was to have a high quality microphone and have a set standard. Um, you need to realize that this has a big impact on the delegates listening at the end. For today, you are a delegate and you are experiencing the different microphones. So for all the interpreters out there, um, hopefully there was a couple of comments in the chat saying, oh, I can hear the different, different quality. That is how important having a good um, microphone and even headphones. Remember if the headphone, if the audio comes out of the headphone and gets picked up by the microphone, the delegate at the end is hearing the source and they're hearing the interpreter. So it's no good. It's so important to have a high quality microphone and a good setup. I'll also reiterate our technicians when they log on to prepare the interpreters, um, they will test the quality of the microphone so we find out exactly what hardware they're running. If it's not good enough, we will either suggest to them to buy something else or we can ship something to them. Um, in this example, they would, everyone was just volunteers, so we were just happy with whatever everyone had um, just to go with it, just because we were doing it for an example. Um, but we will test the quality and if it's not up to scratch, um, we will recommend that they need to do something else or perhaps go and work in one of our um, CRN interpreter hubs. Um, so at a virtual teams meeting, one interpreter, four interpreters, and all on virtual, 20 people in the audience, how does it work? I don't quite understand, Mason, are you able to elaborate on that? At a virtual teams meeting, there's one presenter, four interpreters, and 20 people in the audience. Okay, I understand. Um, so we have one presenter, let's just for this example, because we're all experiencing now that one presenter is speaking English like I am now. There's four interpreters. I'm going to assume because interpreters work in pairs that there's two languages involved here. So let's say Mandarin and Japanese. Those interpreters listen to me in English. They have a video feed. The interpreters working remotely will always need a video feed and an audio feed and they will interpret into Mandarin and Japanese. So then the delegates on the ground. We have one presenter so I know these 20 people are passive delegates. There's a number of ways I can do it. I can say how about we log on to um, WebEx 
and then we'll get them to download the app and listen to their language on the app. Okay, you don't want the app? Absolutely fine. We'll set up some YouTube live streams. One stream will be in English, one stream will be in Mandarin, one stream will be in Japanese. And then all the delegates can choose which YouTube stream they listen to, and away they go. They listen to the presentation, they look at the slides. Unfortunately, the slides are probably going to be in one language unless they get them translated, um, but they will be listening to the interpretation. Hopefully that clears it up, that that's just a couple of scenarios that suits that requirement. Um, so what is the Congress rental policy in terms of the breakdown fee given to the client related to the interpreter's fee in comparison to an on-site interpreting? Um, so most of the time the interpreters will be provided by an interpreter provider. Um, a lot of the time it's sourced by our end clients. Um, it's not that often that we will be the ones that put together a team um, or if we were to do that we would Put, get, we would get a language service provider to, to put together that team and so it's on it's on to that language service provider to provide that breakdown fee. Um, we specialize in obviously interpretation hardware and the platform and the equipment. Um, while we know a lot about interpreting because we work with interpreters on a daily basis, um, we're not necessarily a interpreter or a language service provider. So I would, um, that's kind of more a interpreter or language service provider issue rather than a Congress rental issue. Um, so uh, do you want me to read the, I've got some good, uh, someone says, how do we book Congress rental and four interpreters in Melbourne? Uh, nice segue to that. There's my contact details on the slide. Give me a call and I'll tell you how to book, um, book us and four interpreters in Melbourne. Please get in touch. Um, so we've got some feedback coming through. Mason said there's some good feedback coming through. I'm sorry, I can't keep, um, keep up with the chat. Um, someone, has to, someone has said they're very skeptical about remote interpretation, as are a lot of people, you're not alone there. Um, but the platform is very impressive, thank you. Makes me think remote interpretation may even be possible without sacrificing too much on quality, especially if interpreters from a hub. As I said, absolutely. If the interpreters are fresh or new to remote interpretation, it is absolutely um, a good first step for them to work inside a booth or in an office um, with our technicians on site to support. So say for example, right now we have four um, Macquarie University language students in our office working in booths, social distancing, um, and then um, our technicians are here to support them. Um, they're on the moderator channel, but they are essentially sitting meters away from them. So if they have any issues, um, our guys can just jump in and help them straight away. It calms their nerves. Um, they can focus on doing their job and not worry so much about the technical side. And I think that applies to um, every remote event. It's quite it's quite a big ask for the to ask the interpreters to control the technical side and understand everything. So we like to help out as much as possible. That's why we get the technician in to set them up, explain everything, and do training. So hopefully we have all of that covered for you. And I'm glad that you can see that you know there are some benefits to going remotely, um, but also there's not really much other option right now um, until things turn around and we look forward to um, going back to the normal way. So I'm going to refer to my thank you notes here. Um, I want to thank you all for your engagement. Um, we're going to say goodbye for now. Um, let me thank the team here. We have Barney, uh, we have Mason, we have Paneeth, uh, we had Patrick. Patrick just got married. Congratulations, Patrick. Um, Jordan is downstairs, I think I mentioned him. Um, and then of course we have Jeremy, um, who's been helping us all along. Um, thank you again to all of our CRN partners and all of the interpreters um, that helped out. Thank you for um, getting them involved. There you go, you got a nice screen. There's our um, secret setup. Apologies for the mess. <laughs> um, but most of all, of course, thank you to the audience for um, listening. Um, honestly, when we first started this, we thought we would be talking to a handful of interpreters who might be vaguely interested in remote interpretation. Um, but the feedback and the support we've had has just been crazy. Like, honestly, it's hard to keep up with our inboxes with all of the questions and um, well done notes. So thank you so much. Um, honestly, it just, we wouldn't have done it without all the support um, and it would have been worth it um, without all of this so we, we absolutely say want to say thank you um, 
If you have any questions about on-site or remote interpretation, um, please get in touch. My details are right there. Um, if you uh, would like any more information or would like to discuss some um, hypothetical scenarios or maybe real scenarios, please give me a call. Um, if you have any suggestions for future webinars, um, if you want us to delve into another topic or something in a little bit more detail, please send them through. Um, we're not saying goodbye forever. Um, we, of course, have some extra time on our hands between remote events. Um, so we're more than happy to kind of get back into it, um, especially with all the support we've received. Um, we don't know how long we're going to be um, stuck in lockdown, lockdown, but we're going to be here to support um, on the other side. Um, so stay sensible, stay safe, and look forward to seeing you um, at your next event. Thank you.